Our notes for Pit Stop A are going to be on page 2. Um, Pit Stop B will be on page 3. We're going to set them both up at first, um, and we'll do part, like the first part in Pit Stop A, the second part in Pit Stop B. The title of page 2 is called Compositional Layers. So it's the word composition with A-L, and then the word layers. Okay. The Layers of the earth can be classified in two ways, based on composition, which we'll talk about in this video, and then based on um, what we call mechanical layers, and we'll go ahead and label page three. Okay, When we're talking about the layers of the earth, we're talking about the inside of the earth. So I'm going to draw um, the best half circle that I can at the bottom of this page and we're going to use this for the different layers of the earth. We're going to label it and we're going to color it so that we have a good visual. So just find the bottom of your page all the way up to about um, maybe the halfway point. Okay, And we're going to want to create a half circle that's going, it doesn't have to be perfect, but something kind of like that. Okay, so do you see how it's taking up about half of my page? And once you have it there, I used a pencil, so maybe be careful with a pen, but you can kind of go over the line a little bit darker. Again, today we'll, or the first video, we'll talk on page two, and then you'll fill out page three on the next video. Okay, so back up to the top, for our compositional layers, this is where the earth is divided into layers based on the composition. And composition just means what is it made of. Um, specifically, we're looking at the chemical composition or the elements that are in each layer. So I'm going to put a little definition up here. The inside of the earth. is divided into layers based on what each one is made of. Again, what it's made of, we can also refer to that as chemical composition. And that's where we get the term compositional layers. So again, the inside of the earth is divided into layers based on what each one is made of or its chemical composition. If you think back to when we talked about the periodic table in our chemistry chemical unit, um, we talked about the elements. So when we look at each of the layers, we're going to look at what elements make up that layer. So we're going to talk about um, three different layers when it comes to compositional layers. Um, I'm going to put them, I'm going to list them over here off to the side. So we're going to talk about the crust, we're going to talk about the mantle, and we're going to talk about the core. These words probably sound familiar from fifth grade. Um, and these are the basic layers, again, where we've divided it based on what it's made of. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and draw each one, and then we'll talk about what it is made of. So the crust is actually a very thin layer, and it's the outermost layer. So I'm going to choose um, maybe just a couple, not even a centimeter, off on the side and I'm just going to kind of follow the same line that I had earlier, okay? And this is going to be the crust. Now, I'm only drawing on page two, okay? Because this is going to be our compositional layers, and over here we're going to have our mechanical layers, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and label this as the crust. Now, the crust is only 1% of the volume of the earth. 
Now my drawing is not probably not to scale, right? But if we think about percent, that's, you know, uh, the whole is 100. One one hundredth or one percent of the volume of the entire earth is the crust. So I'm going to go ahead Okay, I think there was a little bit of a mess up in the video. So if you haven't gotten this written down, it's made of oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, and calcium. And then over here, I went ahead and I colored in. I used brown to color the crust, just to give us a better visual. And then I'm not sure if it recorded this part either, but the crust is 1% of the volume of the earth. So it is a very, very small portion of the earth um, as far as a volume. Okay. The next layer is the mantle. The mantle is like the middle section, and I sometimes remember that by M for mantle and M for middle. The mantle is made of mostly iron and magnesium. Again, both elements on the periodic table that we talked about in the beginning of the year in our chemistry unit. It contains some silicon and aluminum. Not as much. Mostly iron and magnesium. When I draw it, <clears throat> excuse me, down at the bottom, this is going to be the biggest chunk of this model. The mantle is 84% of the volume of the earth, so it's much bigger than, than the crust and even the inside layer. So I'm going to go ahead and divide it right about um, maybe about here. Okay, and remember we're only writing on page two right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and label this as the mantle. And I'm going to, just like we did over here, I'm going to write that this is 84% of the volume. Now my drawing is probably not to scale, which means it's not exactly accurate when it comes to the comparison of sizes, but this will help us see that the mantle is 84 times as big as the crust. The crust is 1% and the mantle is 84%. I'm going to go ahead and color that in um, real lightly. It's not, we don't need to spend too much time on it. I'm going to use a yellow just to kind of show the difference. You can even see that in the video. Just to show the difference between the layers. So the mantle, again, to, right now we're only um, coloring and drawing on page two, the next video will cover page three. So that should be good right there. The last layer, the innermost layer of the earth, is called the core. Okay. The core is made of iron and nickel. Iron and nickel. Again, both elements on the periodic table. Iron and nickel are both metals, so the core of the earth is actually made up of metals. I'm going to go ahead and label it down here. This is the core. If we know that percent means out of 100, we've used 1 plus 84, that's 85. That means that what we're left with is 15 percent. Again, our drawing might not be to scale, it might not be accurate, but this helps us kind of see the comparison, that the mantle is definitely the majority of the inside of the earth when we're looking at compositional layers. I'm going to go ahead and color the core um, red. 
again, this doesn't have to be perfect. The color is just kind of helpful when looking at the different layers. And there are your notes for page two.